Growing up in the inner city of Detroit, uh, it's a message that's prevalent. That was prevalent a lot when I was growing up. You know, you always hear the words, the white man's trying to hold me down. Uh, they don't want you to succeed. Don't know who they is, but they don't want you to see. I'm figuring they was talking about the white man because that's who uh, they always blame their problems on and things of that or associated with their problems with. I don't want to say blame their problems on, associated their problems with, um, of course, the race factors, race baiting, uh, all the racial epithets that's out there was always thrown around and it always talked about the demise of you know black people about minorities uh, especially you know i saw it prevalent again when i was in when i lived in texas you know people of the brown culture they would always say oh it's because of this racial group hold stopping us this is why we can't succeed so on and so forth so today we're going to dive into it uh and we're just going to just put the facts with the facts and put the fallacy with the fallacies and then we're going to go on about life but we're going to talk about is race a key factor into determining your success or reaching or obtaining wealth? Or as some people just say, it, do it hinder your ability to get rich based on the race you are and the society you live in? With all that being said, Alex, what you got for me? Yeah, so I want to be careful with how I word things, but you're very open minded. And so I'm interested in asking you questions because I know it'll be unbiased and it'll just be black and white, straightforward. So one question I have is if you think it's, you know, the problems maybe that um, certain ethnicities face in America, if you think that those problems are because of historical you know, because of history leading up until now through generations, or do you think it's the, like, just based off of history, or do you think it's culture of those ethnicity groups? I, well, I'm not going to choose my words carefully. I'm not going to be like you. Uh, and I understand why you choose your words carefully, but uh, I, I think it's really about lack of knowledge lack of understanding period i mean let's just go with the narrative that quote unquote the white man is holding black people down the white man is holding quote unquote the brown people down if you just created for your own people and then had your own people shop at your stores working your i mean working your businesses and then kept the money in the community it's still billions of dollars out there I mean, just look at it. Let's just talk about the black community. For instance, we spend billions, billions upon billions of dollars every year on just hair care. So if we just create it and sold to our own, then how could we blame another ethnicity for holding us down? That's that's what it is. I, I don't think the understanding is we... We push, we push, we push a narrative that I don't believe is 100% true. Now, is it racism in America? Hell yeah. It is racism in America. But is it racism enough to, to say, hey, you, black guy sitting there. Hey, you, black family, brown family sitting there. Just because I'm white, I can stop you from doing whatever you want to do. In America, no. Now, in other countries, I can't speak for them. But in America, no, that can't happen. And I will I will sit here and be disingenuous if I say, oh, no, there's no racism in America. Yes, it is. I mean, is it some people that have high echelon positions or there are some few that own businesses uh, that is racist? Yeah. But the truth is, they care about a color more than you being black, you being brown, you being minority. They care about the color green. So they're not going to hire somebody that's going to destroy their business just because they're white. If you're most qualified for the most part, like I said, it's, I already said, it's some racism out there. But for the most part, they're not. Because they care about the bottom line. 
And I got another story about that uh, coming up about that. But I'll let you ask the next question. Yeah, so one question I have, because um, you, we we especially talk about, but especially you, always mention take action, execute, no excuses, that kind of mentality. So understanding that obviously there is racism in America and I have seen it happen to others or others deal with it. But as you said, you have the same opportunity. Do you think there should be any um, empathy or sympathy for those who allow racism to hold them back? No, I don't think it should be any sympathy or empathy for them. I mean, the the race that I believe holding a lot of people back is not even race. It's understanding history. Like even like a lot of people love to go to the, you know, the news media platforms magically when it's given them an excuse, they accept it. But they go to the music, the news media platforms, and then they always revert black folks or minorities conditions on slavery. So they jump 2024 and then they connect it all the way back, you know, to the 1800s. That's how they connect the black people's condition is because of slavery but people don't study history they don't study history because in the early 1900s you had tulsa oklahoma wealthy black people why so if it went from racism to black wall street in tulsa oklahoma where people was vibrant you know had economics of scale, you know, cars, whatever. They had a lot of money. Now we're here. But because the media pushed the, oh, the reason why their conditions is like this is because of slavery. Well, we forgetting about the bifurcation of Black Wall Street back in the early 1900s. Why don't they talk about that? Why don't they bring that up? Was that just an anomaly in the system? Was that a glitch in the matrix? No. That's people actually of their same color, their same... Uh, background more more sons and daughters of slaves than they are today but magically it's always reverted back to slavery how is that possible and when you go to the the notion of no excuse i don't believe in excuses get the work done alex i don't accept excuses from you i don't accept excuses from my kids i i just don't accept excuses execute and get it done whatever excuses out there it's always a solution. So go find the solution because I don't care about the excuse. But when you're talking in this realm of racism, I know it's a sensitive topic. Nobody want to touch that. And everybody want to follow the media narrative of, oh, it's because you're black, you can't achieve. You got, you got many people that's not celebrities that's doing good. Nobody don't talk about them because the only thing that the black community care about if you could dribble a basketball or if you can play sports but it's a lot of business owners a lot of people that moving up in the corporate world that are black but they want to just excommunicate them out of the numbers and only focus on the situation of oh all we can't get ahead because it's somebody holding over us but with social media and things like that, if people studied history, if people actually did research and not just regurgitated what they seen on TV or only input in their uh, mind's eye of what's being pushed down their throat by the mass media, then they'll see that those people is in the same condition. They are the same color, the same elk as you, but they didn't take no excuse. So why would I give excuses to anybody? The bottom line, so as you would say, is everyone, regardless of ethnicity, race, we all have the same opportunity in a country like America. Not speaking for third world countries, obviously. Right. Yeah, and when you come when you come to that word racism, I, I love to I love to tell this story uh, because everybody's hear this word racism, racism. Uh, I don't pay it no mind. I mean, I care about greenism make sure my money is there i don't care what color you are uh i remember i was in texas uh i had a project going on at one of my commercial properties and 
And then so I just fly. I flew to Texas. The work already started. And then I just walk up to the building. I'm just observing. I'm just sitting there. And all the workers on the uh, project was white. You can even call them redneck if you want to. But so I'm just sitting there looking. And Alex, you know me, my my business dress, my go outside, the house dress is all the same. Damn near pajamas when I go outside. I ain't dressed in no suits to make it look like I'm somebody. So, you know, T-shirt, shorts for me, gym shoes. That's how I show up. And I'm just standing there looking, standing there looking. And then uh, the the leader or the foreman of the project, he walks up there to me. He walks up there to me. He had a, you know, he had a little undertone about himself because he was wondering, like, what the hell are you doing just standing here? You know, I mean, we could we could label it as he thought that I was just, you know, black kid or black man trying to, uh, you know, steal some of the tools or something. But anyway, but he came with an aggressive tone. He came with an aggressive tone at me. And he was like, what are you doing here? I was like, oh, I'm just looking. You know, I don't come out with. Oh, here's my credentials and this and this is who I am. I just said, no, I'm just looking. And then he proceeded, oh, you know, he proceeded saying some other stuff. What are you doing here? Why? Well, what's your business here? Whatever. And then I let him talk for a while because I seen him getting more aggressive. I seen some of his workers started coming, coming this, that way. And uh, no, not strapped. No, didn't have guns on me or nothing like that. And then so he kept talking. I said, oh, wait, let me tell you my name. And then I told him my name. His demeanor totally changed. Oh, 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 sir! Is there is there anything else you could do, I could do for you? Do you want to do this? We could throw this in extra for you, because the thing is, is they can be racist all they want. They cannot like black people all they want, but the thing that they care more about is the color green. They know I have the ability to affect their family. So, in the end of the day, the person who has the green is the person that has the ability. And then they went back, you know, they calmed down. Oh, everything was good then, you know. They they wanted to bring me in. Hey, you want, you want to get together later and let's go have a beer? You know, that's this is the stuff that they were saying. But I could have sit there and said, oh, man, these guys are racist. They don't like me. The truth is money controls it. The, the, the money is what's controlling. Money instantly made them forget that they was racist. Feeding their family and losing this project or losing this job made them instantly forget they was racist. That I mean, I've had I had other stories like that. I mean, I told you Alex about this time in Georgia. I like again, I don't go putting myself out there on social media like, hey, yeah, I own this pro property here. I own this property here. Ninety nine percent of my tenants don't know that I own the property that they live in. So in Texas, I mean, not Texas, in Georgia, I drive up to Georgia. And then this was during a hurricane time. So this is recent. I drive up to Georgia, just checking on damage for the hurricane. Uh, I knew one property didn't, but I was close to it. So I said, hey, why not? So I drive in, I drive in the neighborhood. Well, not in the neighborhood. I drive past the, uh, the fourplex. And then I'm stopping just to take pictures, just to, you know, give everybody, oh, it's okay. You know, ain't no big deal. And then, so I'm driving up and I see a tenant coming out of the, the property and then so i'm taking pictures of it and then i drive down the road and turn back around to get a different angle the tenant's standing right there in the middle of the road in the middle of the road so blocking me from going forward and then so i just i just stop again no guns no nothing he comes up to the passenger side of the car and then i roll down the window and then so he's grilling me what are you doing here well, why are you taking pictures of what, what's going on? With blah, 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 blah. I let him, I let him get it all off his chest. I even asked him his name. Oh, that's not important. So I'm just sitting there. I'm smiling on the inside because I know I have the trump card. And then so I let him rant, rant, rave, talking about, oh, I'm very protective of my neighbors, blah, 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 blah. And then I said, hold on, let me tell you my name. As soon as I told him my name, his whole demeanor switched. Because why? I control his family. So racism gone. Instantly. I control his livelihood. Instantly <laughs> gone. So it went from being aggressive, oh, seeing man. this black guy in their neighborhood, wondering what the <laughs> heck I'm doing there, to, oh, yes, yeah, sir. Um, yeah, so, so this is going on. Oh, I'm so sorry. I apologize. 
so that's really the aspect of it so just because i knew the area that i was in i knew it was majority of white people when i invested in there just because it was white people i didn't think that maybe one day i have a tenant that that's racist or don't like black people i knew that i don't i don't look at that because i don't Again, I don't project myself out on social media saying, oh, I own this and this and this. I buy a property 99% of the time. I'm not even there for the closing. Nobody knows what I look at. As soon as I get the property, I pass it off to a manager and life goes on. The only reason why this tenant knew my name was because I personally talked to him because he needed he needed a, a, a property ASAP. You know, he had a family situation and I wasn't it. And then I set it up so he can get, get into that unit. So that's how he knew my name personally. And as soon as I said it, all his demeanor and everything changed. So was I going to let, because the white man staying in my property going to stop me from making money? Or because it's in a white neighborhood, was I going to let that stop me from making money? Not not a change. And I've I'm invested all over the South. So I know it's some people that maybe don't like black people. I'm not sitting here, got posters up, even in my businesses, I don't put black owned because for what? I only care about the green money. I don't care if you're Asian, Chinese, white. I don't care who you is. Just bring me the money. I'll figure everything else out after that. Now, I, do I accept disrespect? No. And I know some people going to look on here and be like, oh man, he weak. He, he'll do anything for a dollar. No, no. They they don't, I mean, Alex, you see me. Nobody ain't gonna just walk up to me and be like, oh, I'm just gonna knock your black ass out. You know what I mean? <laughs> so they go, they ain't gonna do that. They ain't gonna do that. They gonna, you know, they gonna they, they, can have, they can have that aggression, but they ain't about to they ain't about to come and say nothing crazy. And besides that, I don't I don't care. People worried about the wrong things. And that's that's really my my view on it. I don't. I don't. Uh, that's my total view <laughs> on racism. Once, once you control them, what people do, and it's it don't it don't matter. Oh, they, that racism only goes so far. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But um, no, those are interesting stories, guys. Got any questions or any stories of your own? Let us know down below in the comment section. Uh, share this video, subscribe, and we will see you guys on the next one.